All right, and we are back in live, back in live. Um, Pam Johnson Bennett, thank you so much for joining us again today. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> All right, so folks, um, just as a reminder, my name is Dr. Chris Minges. I'm the Chief Veterinary Officer here at Base Paws, and with me is Pam Johnson Bennett. Uh, just this is part, a bit of a two-part series on here. Pam was with, joined us on Saturday to do a webinar about litter box issues in cats, and we had a little bit of technical issues, and so we're coming up to finish up with some Q and A, some from very from questions from some of our viewers at that time. So if you have not seen it, we'll have a link in the comments to the first part of this video series. And then we'll have these Q&A with us right now. All right. Well, um, Pam, let's uh, let's hop right on into it. Um, okay. All righty. So first off, we had a question right at the very end. We were kind of talking a little bit about scooping litter. So we had a question from Gary Chappelle. And the question was, how do you know when it's time to completely replace the litter in a box versus adding more to the box when that litter box level gets low? Well, it depends on the type of litter you're using. Now, mm -hmm. In general, I recommend scoopable litter, the soft, sandy litter, because cats can have texture preferences. And some of the alternative litters can be kind of sharp and uncomfortable on their paw pads. So if you're using a scoopable litter, then what you should be doing is scooping out the waste as it clumps at least twice a day, hopefully more, but at least twice a day, and topping it off so that you're keeping a consistent level because you don't want the cat to go in there and see you know, a litter box filled with litter one day mm. and then the next day there's hardly anything in there, so keep that consistent. And then about once a month, at least once a month, completely change out the box, wash it out, and then replenish it with fresh litter. Now, it also depends on how much usage it's getting. If you have one litter box and three cats are sharing it, which should not be the case, but if you do, uh, then that litter box probably needs to be completely changed out more often than once a month. If you're using traditional clay litter that doesn't clump, then you should be cleaning the box at least once a week. And if you're using one of the alternative litters, then follow the instructions that they have, that the manufacturer has, but I would say up that a little bit. So you want it to be really clean. Um, you, if you're using any additives, if you are trying to control odor in any other way other than keeping the box clean, then you're not keeping it clean enough. That should be the odor control is a clean box, not a plug-in, not a, an odor additive or a room freshener. So people should not be coming into your house and going, sniff, sniff, you have a cat. <laughs> All right, so so consistency is is king for these cats. And of course, always being a little better than, than kind of those recommendations. You did, now you did mention on there that, you know, the box itself having that smell, whether it be from direct contact with urine or something like that. And that's, that kind of brings us to to another question from, one of our viewers, Aaron Flively, that that has has a male cat that uses the box, but but puts his tail all the way up so he's peeing up the side, so he doesn't squat like normal cats. So, but he's been cleared of any urinary or medical problems by the vet. Okay, it could be a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if cats don't like the litter, either it's too dirty or they don't like the texture of the substrate, they they don't want to come in contact with it. So mm -hmm. they will stand more to to eliminate. And if you think that might be the case, then you can do an experiment by putting a second box out with a different type of litter. So if you're not using a soft, sandy litter use that in the second box and give the cat the choice. You don't want to change the litter in the original box. You want to let the cat tell you what's going on. The other thing it could be is some cats like to spray in the box. And if you have a cat who does that, you're very fortunate because he's being very polite because he could spray someplace else. So in that case, get a tall storage container. It doesn't have to be an official litter box. A plastic storage container that has high sides and you take a Dremel tool and you cut out a low entrance on one end and then sand that down so it's not sharp so that your cat can go in it. I refer to that as a convertible litter box. And that way he can spray if he wants to and it still stays contained in the litter box. Okay, well, you know, that that is a, a, a great mindset. And we've, we've talked to so many people that, that think you can't use a litter box or something besides yeah. a litter box for a, for a litter box. Yeah. And, and nowadays, 
manufacturers are making bigger litter boxes than they used to. When I first started out, litter boxes were so tiny. And when you think of the size of some of our cats, you know, I, I won't mention any names, <clears throat> but some of you watching might have a cat who's a little bigger than he should be. And he needs a bigger litter box. And I mentioned the last time we talked that a litter box should be two and a half times the length of the cat from tip of the nose to base of the tail. And so sometimes that's hard to find a litter box that will accommodate your cat. And a plastic storage container, it, it works. It's perfect. You can customize it to the size of your cat, to the location you need. And as long as you're making a low entrance, you can have that litter box be as high as you, as you need it to be. Oh, yes, and that's that is the the customization. Oh, sorry about that. The customization is really key on there, and it makes it so useful on there. Now, you did mention you did hear a little jingling from a, an extra audience participant on my <laughs> end. Sorry about that. Now, you did mention spraying within the litter box. Um, we also had a question. It was it was a little more general. Um, that was about about just please address spraying. <laughs> 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 it comes in comes in huge um, on this standpoint because it's so. They're so sounds short, like it's kind of an, an immediate thing. It sounds like it's an immediate thing, huh? <laughs> well, we don't. Spring is something people kind of label as. Oh, he's marking his territory. Spring is more complex than that. Spring is a communication method. It could mean. Uh, that he is marking territory. It could be that he's unsure about something and he needs that reassurance that his his scent is there sometimes it is a way to communicate with another cat where the sprayer is not comfortable having an actual confrontation it's kind of leaving a business card saying okay this is this is all the information about me uh i'm i'm not comfortable enough meeting you face to face so it is a high intensity behavior it means something that cat's on high alert something is going on mm -hmm. um you know if it's an intact cat and he's outside then that something that's going on is he's spraying to announce you know that he's available and he's looking for a mate and he wants other males to know that this is his but if he's a neutered male or even a, a spayed female because females will spray it means something isn't quite right and he's he or she is trying to address it so you have to look at beyond the litter box. You have to look at what's going on in the household. Have you been trying to introduce a new cat? Have there been a lot of changes? Is he really nervous about something? Uh, has there been a new family member? Something's happening. And one of the things I tell clients to do is use video. Mm. There are so many inexpensive home security cams now that you can set up with your smartphone so that you can see what's going on. Just set up a camera in those trigger areas if your cat is spraying in certain spots so you can see what's happening 30 seconds or a minute before he sprays. And that might be the clue. You might see that he has an altercation with another cat. Uh, and that might mean that you either didn't do the introduction right or if it's cats who've been together for a while, it's it's time to maybe tweak that environment so that they feel a little more secure. So I know that isn't a, okay, this is why cats spray and here's the answer kind of answer, but there's a reason for it and you have to find what the underlying reason is. Mm -hmm. And that that is so key. You know, I, I, like you mentioned this, there's so many questions that come like, please address this one specific thing for my cat. But this one specific thing for your cat means we need to figure out everything that's going on in your cat's life. It's it's very unique for your cat's personality, whether it be an altercation or or some other stress mode as well that can help move that on there. And, and that, you know, that trigger, that video trigger is a, is a fantastic idea. I mean, it's it really is the best way because maybe it's because he sees a cat outside. Mm -hmm. So you see him on the video looking out the window and then running and spraying. So I, I tell clients, you know, whenever there's a behavior problem, if it's two cats who aren't getting along, whatever it is, video is great. And nowadays you can get cams for like, $20, under $20 that just connect with your your smartphone and you can see what's going on. And, and that's the best evidence so that you can solve the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, there's, and, I, and I, not just with this, and may also for litter box issues every now and then as well. 
Is that is that useful? You know, we have this question from Delia Mendoza, and she has a four month old kitten. Um, now, this is a little bit of a different situation because it is a kitten, um, and it was just adopted. Uh, but sometimes it's, she said she she goes on the side of the litter box. Um, is that is that a problem, or is there tips to solve, or kind of how do you look at that situation? It it might be that that litter box is mm -hmm. it might be too small. The cat may not like the litter. Maybe the the kitten was not totally well trained to the box by by the mother cat. So what I would do in that case is make sure you have. <laughs> A large enough litter box that's not too high sided, you know, in the case of a younger cat, and that you have a scoopable, unscented litter, and that you kind of guide the cat. Never put the cat in the litter box, but cats tend to use the litter, you know, after eating or after sleeping or after playing. So there are kind of times that you might know that that she'll use the litter box. So if you're playing with her, maybe kind of guide the toy into the room where the litter box is so that she sees it's there and you can watch and see from a distance, don't hover, and see what the pattern is or set up a camera if you can to see. Um, but sometimes it's, it's either the litter box is too high or it's too low or the box isn't clean enough or the cat doesn't like the litter substrate. Cats want to use the litter box. It goes with their instinct to dig a hole, eliminate and cover to prevent predators from detecting that scent. So when a cat isn't doing it, it means something in that chain of behavior is broken that the mm -hmm. cat can't do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, this, this kind of also brings us to, to the next question on here. And this is a little bit of a different scenario. It's, it's older, but you know, you mentioned the the cat not not using the litter box on there. Um, it says, I brought my cat back from the vet last weekend for an annual checkup. He had a clean bill of health and never since each night he's gone to the bathroom. Um, he's eliminated on my purse or on my bed while I'm asleep, but he's almost 14. Well, he's he's gone to the, to the vet for his annual checkup. It I would recommend that you contact your veterinarian mm -hmm. again and mention this because maybe more needs to be done. You know, when you went for an annual checkup, there was no problem, but problems start at some point. And maybe the cat was very, very stressed out uh, at the veterinary clinic. Uh, maybe this is a new situation. Uh, so that sounds like something that I would want a little more information from the veterinarian uh, before assuming it's it's behavioral. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, maybe put another litter box, keep your purse off the floor, uh, <laughs> and put another litter box in that location where you normally keep your purse because with a different type of litter because maybe the cat is associating something with the original litter box and it might just be stress, which mm -hmm. is a big trigger for a lot of cats with litter box issues. But I would just go back to the veterinarian and, and just make sure he or she knows that this new behavior has popped up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that the last kind of you mentioned stress on there. And of course, we we glanced on it. We talked about stress in the household, stress in the multi cat household as well. Um, and then this this question also came through that was that was a little same kind of similar. But this one is very much stress in my mind. You know, of course, my cat Chewy has been cleared of UTI or crystals in his urine or um, and ever since replacing the litter box with a new one. He pees directly outside the box half the time. Um, so, you know, been to the vet. Now we've kind of looked at a, a stress scenario. When you start to think about these stress and litter box scenarios, where do you where do you move to and move through those problems? Well, first thing in dealing with this question is they said they had replaced the litter box. That can be a stress factor in itself. I don't like replacing litter boxes. I like adding a litter box and let the cat make the choice so that if he is then using the new litter box, then you can get rid of the, the old one. But I don't, I don't like to just replace it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to do that with anything, scratching posts too. You know, I like to let the cat transition. They don't like abrupt changes. But in dealing with stress with litter boxes, um, stress is a huge factor with cats. And um, there was, uh, Dr. Tony Buffington had coined this phrase Pandora syndrome because there were a lot of urinary problems coming up with cats who did not have 
a cause for it. There were no crystals in the urine. There is nothing that they could actually diagnose. And it seemed to be, it's what we refer to as idiopathic cystitis. And he found out that stress was a huge trigger in that, that some cats are more prone to it, the cats who are a little more fearful, uh, who are more sensitive, but really any cat can be prone to it. We don't appreciate how stress can have a physical effect on a cat. So, you know, that might be the situation where you have to look at reducing overall stress. And, you know, some people may say, what does my cat have to be stressed about? You know, he doesn't have to work, food's in the kitchen, the litter box is there, you know, he lounges around all day. Well, cats do go under a tremendous amount of stress. It's stressful going to the litter box in a multi-cat household because you don't know if you're going to get ambushed. It's stressful if you have cats eating too close together because they're not social eaters. It's stressful if, if your house is chaotic, if there have been changes, if there's something going on outside. You know, just outside my house, they were doing road work. There's a lot of noise there. My cat stayed in the back of the house because she didn't like it. So stress can affect everything. So that's something you have to look at is just overall reducing stress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's, you, you brought up the, also the reducing stress and then that transition, the, the abrupt change transition. I think we, we talk so much about abrupt changes with a focus on food and diet. Um, and, and we, uh, overlook how much it affects the lives of, of all the different things, whether it be from toys, litter boxes, scratching posts, um, you know, if, if anything that the cat owns or kind of feels that they own and interact with can be, can be difficult to change. Cats are territorial. They take comfort in the familiar. They mm -hmm. like they're creatures of habit. They when, when they go to the litter box and they want to know that it's the same texture, the same scent or lack of. When they go to the food bowl, they want it to be the same. They want it in the same location. And abrupt changes are frightening. Even, mm. you know, cats are territorial. The abrupt change of adding another cat, it, it's terrifying for that cat. Even though cats are social creatures, their first instinct is, oh my gosh, there's a sudden change. Am I in danger? What about my resources? So everything that we do with cats, we want it to be gradual to help them through it so that we're not causing unnecessary stress. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, uh, thank you again so much for, for coming back and answering these questions. I do, I always have one question at the end that I, I kind of want to have for you. And it's, you know, we covered so much in, in our, our session on Saturday and then also today um, of, of looking at stress and litter box and cats and multicast households. Is there anything that we did not cover that, that you want to, that you want to champion, that you want to talk about? We said it in the beginning, and I think it's a good thing to end, is look at whatever problem you're dealing with from your cat's point of view. Don't look at it as something that is bad and you need to punish. The cat is eliminating outside of the litter box, therefore, you know, I have to rub his nose in it or yell at him or smack him or force him in the litter box. You're only going to add stress and you're not addressing the cause of the problem. And now the cat will be afraid of you. Do not look at unwanted behaviors as bad behaviors. They are appropriate behaviors that the cat is displaying because something isn't working and he's trying to solve a problem. So look at it from his point of view, be compassionate and you'll find the answer. Punishment is never the solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is never the solution. Well, folks, again, let's let's thank Pam Johnson Bennett for her time. Um, we have, you know, with with Pam Johnson Bennett, uh, she is a fantastic author, um, and she has her book Catwise. It's available now from Amazon.com or bookstores everywhere if they are open. But you can also follow her on Facebook um, at Facebook.com/slash Pam Johnson Bennett, as well as her website at www.catbehaviorassociates.com. So folks, again, thank you, Pam, so much for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on, um, on Saturday and today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, all righty, folks. Well, y'all have a great day and stay safe.